All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and start quickly through all of the different identities. And you actually know some of these already, okay? You know that the cosecant of x is really the reciprocal of what? Sine. Sine. So cosecant of x is really equal to 1 over the sine of x, right? What do you mean, right? Uh, not very glass. Okay? You guys probably want to take notes on this. I, I don't think you're going to memorize all of them. Unless you want to watch this again later. Okay. Um, all right. Secant of x. 1 over cosine. Cotangent of x, 1 over the tangent. You could kind of even write them the other way. I don't know that it's necessary, but I'll write them the other way. What's 1 over the cosecant going to equal? Sign. <laughs> One over secant would be cosine. These are just kind of repetitive here. And one over cotangent would be tangent. Basically, you these are just the ones you kind of already knew. Sine and cosecant are reciprocals. Secant and cosine are reciprocals, cotangent and tangent are reciprocals of each other. Okay? So those are the reciprocal identities. You kind of already knew those. You've been using those a little bit. Now I'll get you a couple new ones here. Give me any more time on that? Okay. Quotient identities. Quotient identities. Quotient means what? Dividing. Dividing. There are just two of these. And really, you don't need to memorize both of them, because if you know one of them, you should know the other one. Tangent of x can be rewritten as sine over cosine. Yeah. Is that because since tangent is y divided by x and sine is equal to y and cosine is, cos, cosine is equal to x? You get here early and the brain's just rolling right away, isn't it? Way to go. <laughs> when you guys think of tangent, like on, let's say, our time test, right? And you're doing tangent of 90 degrees, or tangent of pi over 2. You think, okay, pi over 2, that's up here. And then for tangent, you think y over x, right? Okay? So tangent is y over x, correct. But then, what trig function is our y? Sine, what trig function is our x? Cosine. Okay, so he said it exactly right. That's why tangent is really equal to sine over cosine. Okay, so then what would cotangent be? Cosine, cosine over sine, right? Because they're reciprocals of each other. I'll show you another way to think of it here. I'm not going to use that word here. And this is just for your own benefit. Let's say I got a unit circle. <clears throat> this is some x distance and this is some y distance, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you agree that cosine of theta is equal to x over 1? 
cosine of theta is equal to x over 1, or cosine of yes. theta is equal to x. Mm -hmm. If cosine of theta is equal to x, couldn't I replace x with cosine of theta? If they're equal to each other? Yeah. And y is equal to what? Yes. Sine of theta. So would you agree then that tangent, which is opposite over adjacent, do you see how tangent is equal to sine over cosine? Mm -hmm. Right? So that's why these quotient identities are true. And that one's going to lead me into our next set of identities. They're called the Pythagorean identities. Pythagorean's theorem, you think what? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You think on a right triangle, right? Okay. We'll take a look at this picture. If you do A squared plus B squared equals C squared, what would that read? Cosine squared. Cosine squared. Sine squared. Well, sine squared <coughs> equals, one squared. equals one squared, which is equal to one. Your very first Pythagorean identity is simply that. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. That is your first main Pythagorean identity. When you, just a little notation note here, when you square the sine of theta, or the cosine of theta, when you square this, you can write it one of two ways. You can write it like this, or you can write it like this. Okay? They mean the same thing. It does not mean this. That's wrong. Okay? This over here would mean to square whatever theta is and then do the cosine of that answer. These mean to actually take the value cosine theta and square that value, whatever it is. Or a lot of times if you don't want to use parentheses, you can just put the squared on the trig function itself, on cosine or on sine, kind of like I did right here. And that means this. Okay. So that's your first Pythagorean identity. Does everybody see why that's true with this picture? There are two more Pythagorean identities. I don't memorize them. I memorize this one, and then I figure out the last two. Okay? Because I just get them confused trying to memorize them. Okay? But I know how to figure them out. I know this one. This one makes sense. I saw the unit circle. That makes total, complete sense to me. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Okay? There are two other ones that will show up once in a while using some different trig functions. Right. The reciprocal of tangent. So that would be what? Yeah. Right. I'm going to take each one of these, or I'm going to take this entire equation, and I'm going to divide it by sine squared. Okay, so essentially, I'm dividing this by sine squared. I'm dividing this by sine squared, and I'm dividing this by sine squared. Okay. Well, what's sine squared divided by sine squared? Yeah. Careful. One. one. Right? Anything divided by itself is one. What's cosine squared divided by sine squared? So if cosine squared over sine squared would equal cotangent squared. And what's 1 divided by sine squared actually equal to? What's 1 over sine? Cosecant, so 1 over sine squared would be cosecant squared. your second Pythagorean identity. The 
what did I do to the first one, the first identity here, to figure out the second one? I divide everything by sine squared. So guess what I'm going to do to figure out the other one? Divide everything by cosine squared. <clears throat> What's sine squared divided by cosine squared? Tangent. Tangent squared. What's cosine squared divided by cosine squared? One. And what's 1 divided by cosine squared? Secant squared. Those. I'm going all from this one. Yep, I'm going all from this one. Sine squared divided by cosine squared is tangent squared. <coughs> cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1. <coughs> 1 divided by cosine squared is secant squared. Okay. So I can't rattle all three of these off, and I've been doing this for a long time, okay? I know this one, this one makes sense, I can see it on a unit circle. And then if you give me a, a minute or so, I can tell you what the other ones are. Because I just take this one and I either divide every term by sine squared, or I divide every term by cosine squared to get the other two Pythagorean identities. Okay? Questions so far? Do we have them all written down? Simplify this expression. One plus sine x times one minus sine x. When I see this, I see a binomial times another binomial. I'm going to foil this out. Okay. Hopefully it simplifies a little bit. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times negative sine x is minus sine x. Sine x times 1 is positive sine x. <coughs> positive sine x times negative sine x would be negative sine squared. So far so good. See anything that's going to simplify? Yeah. The two in the middle will cancel each other out. The negative sine x and the positive sine x, they cancel each other out. So what am I left with? One minus, One minus sine squared x. And we can go even simpler than that. Take a look real closely at stuff you've written down so far. You've got to look real closely. can't just be focused entirely in the box. What will 1 minus sine squared x actually equal? Do you see any identities that contain a 1 and a sine squared in some fashion? Uh, so sine squared uh, plus cosine squared equals 1. So since we have a 1 on the sine, then on the other side of the equal sign will be the cosecant, or the cosine, my bad. So you're saying this is really equal to cosine squared? Yeah. Yep. Very good. Okay. I'll show you. As long as you're not seeing it. Okay. One of your identities says that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, right? If I move this over to the other side by subtracting it, do you see then how cosine squared x would equal 1 minus sine squared x? So when you see 1 minus sine squared x, you should recognize that that is actually just very simply equal to cosine squared x, using this identity right here. 
You just kind of have to recognize that. It wasn't perfect in there for you. You had to do a little manipulation of the identity, okay? But we know this is true, so obviously this is true as well. Because we've just moved something over to the other side, and we could say that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. So anytime you see 1 minus sine squared, that is actually just equal to cosine squared. And that's as simple as you're probably going to make that one. Okay? You started with this nasty binomial times a binomial, and you simplified it all the way down to cosine x. Okay? That's an example of some things that you'll be doing, is you'll be taking a more complicated looking expression, doing some math with it, doing some algebra, all right? and then using the identities that I've given you to eventually simplify it to something fairly easy. Okay? Do a couple more with you and I'll kind of let you work. Let's do cosine theta divided by Cosine theta divided by cotangent theta. We're going to just simplify this. One of the strategies to simplifying is to put everything in terms of sines and cosines and hope that stuff kind of cancels. So I see I got a cosine already here, but here I have a cotangent. So let's maybe <coughs> rewrite cotangent in terms of sines and cosines. What was one of your identities that said what cotangent was equal to? Cosine over sine. Cosine over sine. So we could say this is really equal to the cosine of theta over cosine theta over sine theta. I can replace cotangent with cosine over sine. Any question what I did so far? I just replaced cotangent with cosine over sine. Pretty close, yep, yep. Right? It will end up being 1 over sine. Okay? For those of you that cannot see that, alright, I will show you how that works. If I have to divide by a fraction, <coughs> You don't actually divide, correct? When you divide by a fraction, you actually end up multiplying by the reciprocal. reciprocal. So if I'm going to take cosine divided by this fraction, it would be very much like taking cosine and multiplying it by the reciprocal of your denominator, right? Mm -hmm. Cosine divided by this really means cosine times this. I think I said it wrong earlier. It is not going to be just one over sine over sine. So now when you take this times sine over cosine, what happens? The cosines cancel each other out, and all you're left with is sine of theta. And the reason that you get sine of theta, sorry, I think I said 1 over sine of theta. Yes, the cosines cancel here, but that will leave you with 1 over 1 over sine. And 1 divided by 1 over sine is actually sine. So, so it's just sine. So, yep, sine. Yep. This fraction will simplify to just sine theta. We really start working a lot again now with fractions, fraction operations, common denominators, adding and subtracting fractions, multiplying and dividing fractions. But there are no numbers. It's all sines, cosines, stuff like that. So, can I have an idea a little bit? What I've done for you so far to get started. I'm trying to start at very basic. 
to give you a good understanding. On Schoology, I've created Unit 3, and then Unit 3 Practice. And the first few are just very basic. <clears throat> I'm just going to have you practice writing these expressions in terms of sines and cosines. Okay? You can verbally do these probably in the next couple minutes, or you can write them out whatever you prefer is best for you. These seven won't take you very long at all. Okay, but I think it's good practice to put everything in terms of sines and cosines. Then the next set, these will all use your Pythagorean identities. So we'll see if you can figure those out. Those will be all you just use your Pythagorean identities. And then the last set, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, will be a little bit more like the two that I showed you. A little bit more complicated, a little bit tougher. Okay? So actually, this is this one ended up being very similar to the one that I did. I think it was just reciprocal to the one I just did for you, so I mean, kind of know what that answer is going to be. So, let's see what you can do. I went pretty quick through this, but you guys didn't have any questions, so I feel like I can get you at least started with some of these basic ones. So, let's just work on simplifying these expressions to finish up the day. <clears throat> 